Aaron Banks, this pick in round two really surprised me. I mean, when it when they when they were on the clock, I was like, all right, here we go. Wide receiver, fourth year in a row, wide receiver. And it was like guard. It's like, oh, and he's 330 pounds. Oh, okay, Kyle. Uh, wasn't expecting that. A lot of people are like, man, this guy's good, but does he really is he fast enough? Does he get how does this guy fit the offense? And what do you think of the pick? Uh, I thought this was their best pick of the draft. And, you know, it's funny because I, before I watched him, like, right, I mean, I hadn't watched a minute of Aaron Banks before they drafted him, full disclosure. So when they drafted him, I was like, wait, what? 335-pound guard? What is going on? Is he not a fit for wide zone? Are they changing something? Blah, blah, blah. And the NFL Network broadcast, like Daniel Jeremiah said, like, he's not a fit for wide zone, blah, blah, blah. And then you watch him, and he actually does – play in a wide zone offense they do run wide zone and he is quick enough and he is mobile enough to play within it and then you look at his size you look at the fact that he's a good pass protector and he's a good run blocker and you're like wow this is a perfect fit he's well coached from Notre Dame he has a, quite a few starts behind him like this to me is a seamless they drafted him and he's going to start for them for the next five to ten years this is an unbelievable pick in my opinion this was a Grant Cohn pick I was always I was stuck on the fact that they had to go corner before they addressed any other position. You yes. were a little more if they go offensive line, I'll forgive them for not taking a corner. They went offensive line first, and I thought it was a hell of a pick. Yeah, I mean, from everything I see with this guy, he's a really good, he's really good in pass protection. Like he has the type of body that he can actually match up with someone like Chris. What's that? Chris Jones, which the Niners couldn't do two mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, he could, he seems like he's a good matchup against Aaron Donald. Um, it seems like beyond what he can give you as a pass protector, he's freaking mauler in the run game. And mm -hmm. if the Niners do want to run like zone read him and Alex Mack pushing on a, uh, a nose tackle will be, get some movement in that one. I mean, it seems, I like it. It seems like this, this guy could have like a, I mean, could be up there with like Mikey potty. I mean, Mikey potty was really good when he was young. Could be, I mean, he could be like that kind of a player. Mikey potty would wear people down and, and win games in the fourth quarter. So two things. Mike Upati was never a great pass protector. No, this he wasn't. This guy already seems to be a good pass protector. And two, Mike Upati in no way in hell could have played in a wide zone offense. He already seems Correct. to be able to do that. So this guy, Correct. I think this guy's a little bit different. Um, I was I mean, He's not exactly surprised. Zach Martin, is he? No, no, absolutely no. not. That's a Hall of Fame guard. But if right. he starts 10 years for the 49ers as a good starter, which he looks like he's more than capable of doing – then, yeah, this is a phenomenal pick. I thought it was the best pick when you look at how he fits, if he's bringing something new, and just in terms of filling a need, I thought he checked all three of those boxes, which is what makes him a really good pick. Also, I think the reason the Niners went offensive lineman over corner here is because this guy's going to start week one. Mm -hmm. I mean, no offense to Daniel Brunskill, but you're like the do-everything backup who plays every position. This guy's going to be the starting right guard right away, and I think the Niners feel like there wasn't any starting position open in the secondary, although there could be if there's an injury. So I, right, I get it. Right. I get it. Also, also, I think the cornerback, the top tier of cornerbacks was over. That that was gone. They missed it. They never had a chance to get it really at 43. Mm -hmm. And at, at, at 48, you can get who you consider the best the best guard in the draft. I Me? No, yeah. I think the best guard in the draft was taken 14th overall uh, by the Jets. This Elijah Barrett, out. Barrett. Yeah. Uh, Bob, Bobby Sala. Nice pick. Yeah. yeah. Bobby had a good draft. I thought he had a good draft too. The coach says – Trey Lance got to sit. The kid never ran a two-minute drill in his life beyond other things. How about we let the professionals gauge his readiness? Unbelievable. Uh, I, I love, love the indignation this. at the end. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, you, you know, are we not I, the I professionals? My favorite part about this is that people tweet at me this, but, like, aren't you gauging his readiness by saying he's not ready? Like, yeah. this is the same exact thing. That's right, we're coach. Both, we're both predicting in different manners. The reason I say he is ready is because – the, the his biggest problem is that he is an enigma because of the number of times he threw the ball mm -hmm. and you're not going to get uh, he's not going to get like he don't, grant do you think he needs to improve in terms of like oh does he need to learn the offense better all those things by all accounts he's not just good he's in that cool area study. he's, he's cool off study. the charts yeah. in that area that's not so that's issue. not yeah. right that's not his problem his problem is that he needs to get on the field and throw the football and go through uh, the, the process of getting better, yeah, right? The different situations, absolutely. Well, he's not not running a two minute drill in his life. Sitting on the bench is not going to help him run a two minute drill. That's a good point. He's going to have to run the two minute drill. Um, and it's not like Jimmy Garoppolo runs a great two minute drill. Uh, they don't even let him do it. Remember in the Super Bowl? Remember that, Coach? 
No, good coach. No, good good donation. I appreciate you, man. But just because you're the coach doesn't mean that you have that I'm not. I could call myself the coach too. In fact, I'm quality control. So now I'm co- now I'm, I'm coach Grant from the rest of, for the rest of the uh, program. So it makes me an expert. Preston says Lance starts by week five at the latest. This offense is absolutely being shaped around him. Banks, the running backs, Jalen Moore, the short pass game, et cetera, moving towards scheming for players, not drafting for scheme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well I mean, look, what you brought up was really uh, smart. I mean, Lamar Jackson started after the bye week. What did they gain from that? If they could do it over again, would they play him early or stick with Joe Flacco? They stick with Joe, they stuck with Joe Flacco for the wrong reasons. And if the Niners stick with Jimmy Garoppolo, it'll probably be for the same kind of sentimental stuff. Well, he took us to a Super Bowl. We like Jimmy. The, the team likes Jimmy. Let me ask you this. Room. Let me ask you this. I mean, one of their biggest problems they've said with Garoppolo is the health, right? And I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm not wishing this on Jimmy Garoppolo. But what happens first snap of week one if he gets hurt? What's, yeah, I mean, what's, that's – Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did Trey I know it's not going to happen. Yeah. 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 At well, least let him take all the reps in camp so he's ready for that situation point. already. Good point. Good point. David says – hold on. Let me click it. When the only film you have is of a quarterback play against a school, oh, come on. You want to see him dominate. And Lance dominated. When he comes in, he'll be great. Okay. Well, he definitely did dominate. That's what uh, Trent Balky used to say when he drafted Mikey Potty. He's like, yeah, he went to Idaho, but watch him. I mean, he's like just destroying people. Uh, Colin says if they play Garoppolo and he's healthy playing well, would they try and ship him at the deadline or see it through to the end of the season? How do you see that one playing out? If, if Jimmy holds on to it and they don't t- follow your advice and Jimmy gets the w- start week one and like play, it's like, say it's, say it's 2012 and somehow Jimmy gets to start and he plays well. It's like his best season. And it's like, they're like looking for an opportunity to bring in Trey, no, I don't but think, Jimmy's I don't think off. they would move him at the deadline then because he would still have the same value in the off season. Good point. Good point. Um, and if he's winning, why do you go away from something that's working? Right. Sean says running right could be vicious with McGlinchey. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Appreciate McGlinchey's it. McGlinchey's a good run blocker. He is. He just needs to gain 20 pounds. I'm trying to help him. I think I, I think we helped him. Felix said, any update on Warner? We didn't touch linebacker, so we must be paying him, right? They better good point. be paying him. Good point. If they had drafted a linebacker early, that would be a, a, a red flag, but they didn't, so I would expect it. Maybe, maybe they're waiting for something to do something with Jimmy first. I would be beyond upset if they don't pay Fred Warner. Like, I don't know if I could even give analysis, Grant, on a Monday. We might have to take that Monday off because I would be, like, so upset. That would be ridiculous. How could they can call themselves Super Bowl contenders and then trade their best defensive player the day before? No. It's just the deadline's training camp. They'll get it done. It's just I can't expect him to be on the field for minicamp or anything until it is done. So mm-hmm. soon would be good. 